Hello, Anthony Van Dyke. So, Anthony Van Dyke, a uh, Flemish Dutch artist who lived or died in the 17th century, died in 1641, and travelled around Europe, Rome, England, etc., buried in London. So, this is a copy of a Van Dyke painting. It was copied by Emil Breher, a German painter, at the end of the 19th century. So it's a Victorian copy of a original earlier Van Dyck painted around 1600, something like that. So he was a court painter, Van Dyck was a court painter and was commissioned by royal households in England certainly and, and elsewhere and was known for portraits particularly. So we have a double portrait here and uh, on the, our internet listing on robertmorrisantiques.com there, there is uh, note, some information on the back, there's annotations and the whole story. And obviously if you, if you look, at, look at Van Dyck, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find mountains, far, far much more stuff than you want to find about Sir Anthony Van Dyck. And you'll, you'll find other images, other paintings. And you'll find other paintings also by this Emil Bre Bremer, who was an accomplished commercial artist painting pictures that people wanted. The first thing about this picture is it's good condition. It's tight, not been relined because it doesn't need it. Not an old picture, not hold, it's not had any damage. It's a big picture. It doesn't need re-stretching uh, or it's nearly work going to the canvas with the exception perhaps of a light varnish or oiling which will give it back its wet, a wet look Frame is a very, very good frame. Frame is a contemporary to the painting. Victorian uh, gesso on pine, real gold leaf, water gilded frame. It is discovered due to dirt. It's quite a dirty frame. The yellowness is gone. The gilding on this occasion hasn't rubbed very much. And I think that that will clean up. If you use water to clean it, it will, it will, it will attract the gold leaf and it will reveal the clay gesso beneath or at least it will re reveal the glue adhesive which is called a bowl, bowl B-O-L-E. So if you rub it with a wet cloth you'll get the redness coming through followed by quite rapidly um, the actual gesso which it's made of and that will be horrible to see the white and the reason for the bowl is apart from it giving a sticky surface for the glue you're stuck to. It means that if it does get rubbed, you see the bowl, not the white gesso. So on this one, I imagine they've used a red bowl. However, sometimes with a frame like this, they will use in the crevices a yellow bowl because it's very hard to put gold leaf into crevices and it's very hard to burnish inside a crevice. So if the, the, the gilder misses burnishing or gold leafing in the crevice. If it has a yellow bowl, it won't stick out and look like it's missing. But they, they will usually use a red bowl where it's easy to gild because the red shows showing through rubbed gold has a very nice effect. So you have a very expensive frame. And to go and buy that frame now in England, if you go to a shop in London or a shop anywhere else and say, can I buy that frame new? First thing is they won't have one on the shelf. You have to order it. And that, that will cost you £2,000 and take nearly a year to get. And that's an optimistic price. So it's a good frame. It's a copy, yes, it's an after painting, but it's a good after painting. And I think that if the gold is cleaned, it won't need much regilding where it is rubbed away and it will crack, for example. The, the corners each have. Each have cracks where it's shrunk and made made this hole. So a, what will happen is the gilder will not use water to clean; they use oil, and they will use an oil oil to clean the gold leaf. You can't use water; you can't use soap. So if they use an oil, it will remove the dirt, but it won't remove the gold. So they'll clean it, and they will then go over the repairs. They'll need to fill these corners with resin or adhesive. They'll need to repair any chips, not many, and then they will put gold on the areas where it needs needs repair. So uh, laborious, expensive job.
if you were to regild that frame, the, the builder would need £300 for just the gold. So you can see how expensive these frames are. Okay, so we discussed what, what, who painted it, we've discussed who it's come off, who, who the image originally came from, we discussed the frame. The frame is slightly narrow for the picture in my view, that's just a personal thing. I, I think that it, that my, my feeling is that Van Dyke would have a wider frame on it if it was one of his. So if you were being fussy, you, you, would, you would perhaps have a wider frame. It might be when, it, when, it's, when the gilding is repaired, sorry, restored and brightened, uh, it doesn't look so inadequate. The gold on the bodice is probably gold thread embroidery and that bodice probably was hard, rigid. And I think it does go very well with the frame, in fact, you have the gold embroidery on the picture. You have two gold rings with jewels, you have the arm of a chair, you have a, a sort of ordinary background for a portrait with architectural form in a window. That, that would be the same with Lily or a multitude of other painters. Uh, the girl has a very nice little sort of headdress on, and they're both well dressed, lace on the corner, on the, on the shoulders of the of the woman. So the question is, who you know, who wants this sort of painting anymore? It won't fit in a modern house. It won't fit with 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 most modern tastes. However, it's not a religious painting, so it has got perhaps more uses than a, than a saint painting, for example. I think that if you have a house in a town like Bought on the water, or Bath, or in Georgian, in Georgian London, Georgian parts of London. It, it's fashionable not to have paintings like this. It's fashionable to have the sort of Banksy type modern things and the, and the, and the Chinese mirrors. But I think that there, there is a place for this sort of picture. And in, in, a, in a very expensive house, there, are, there, are, there, there can be areas of formality and areas of informality. You might not want it in a dining room, for example because you could say it's slightly doer. They're not smiling, for example, it's quite dark, but, it, but you might, might go well in the library, might go well on the staircase. So, so it has got places where it can go. And if you have a big house, if you have a big 17th century house, big farmhouse, and you have a wall, nothing on it, you do need, you do need to use a big picture. A, a collection of small pictures or a small picture will look very poor. Uh, the expression is if, if you put a small picture in a big wall in a big room, it will just look like a, a nothing, insignificant. A pee in a bucket is an expression someone once told me about big rooms. You have to use big things to furnish big rooms, and unfortunately that means expensive things. I don't know how much longer the taste will dictate that people will buy modern prints and these Chinese mirrors with the, the moulded gilt effect resin. I'm, I'm not sure how long that that... that current trend will last but I think that, that at some stage we'll, we'll come out of the other end of that and we'll come out of the other end of the, these these gicle prints these inkjet prints these big prints and I think that, that we'll come to a time when people do want to get back to this sort of mood because it sets a mood and it's it's the right look if you're trying to appropriately furnish a house if you're trying to make an old house look like a modern house it won't work very well but I, I think that there are, there are still enough people who who are around who will want these these things so that's a big picture not a lot of money because it's a copy it's an it's an england for sale thanks very much for looking